Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today it is all about, it is all about the Klipsch Forte 4. It's a big speaker, pretty big. It's a horn speaker as pretty much all Klipsches are. And uh, well, I, I'm, I'm late to this party. It seems like a lot of people have already reviewed the four and now it's my turn. And I don't know that I'm going to say a lot that everybody else hasn't already said about the speaker's incredible dynamics, its power, its li it has this live quality. But that's true for a lot of clipsches. It is, for most even, I'd say. But anyway, before I get into the, into the details of the speaker and, and how I, what I think of it, I want, you, you may have noticed that, well, sharp-eyed viewers may have noticed, I am not home. No, I am at Hi-Fi Loft in New York City, in Manhattan. It's a brand new location for them. It's a townhouse. It's, I think, three floors or four floors of audio. It's beautiful. They just moved in recently. So yes, this room is a little live. I think they'll do stuff to, to tame it a little bit. And it feels like home. It's shiny and new. But then again, <laughs> so is the Forte 4. So this is a, a refresh. I reviewed the, the Forte 3, I think, in 2017. Uh, but the, the tweeter has a new uh, phase plug. There's an all-new mid-range driver. And the tweeter and the mid-range are compression drivers. Uh, mounted in Tractrex horns. And then there's a 12-inch woofer. And then, round back, there is a 15-inch passive radiator. It's a Klipsch. It's very dynamic. It's very alive feeling. It's a very powerful sounding speaker. It, it sounds like live music, at least let's say amplified <laughs> live music, because most of the music you hear that's going through a PA, PA system has been played through horn speakers. So yes, when you're listening to a horn speaker, it has that live sound that we associate with live music. Absolutely. This speaker is made in Hope, Arkansas, where their company was founded in, I think, 1946. Again, that's history. Few speaker companies, few, very, very few, can match it for longevity. That's for sure. And speaking of longevity, the speaker comes, the Forte 4 comes with a 10-year warranty. Price, price is $4,500 a pair. Seems like everybody that reviews Klipsch's makes note, and I'm about to do it myself, that these speakers are uh, very tunable to the room that they're in, meaning more than the average speaker, that they can be bright if you tow them in directly to the listening position, they can be less bright if you tow them slightly less in focus towards the listening position. And if you fire them straight ahead, in other words, no toe-in, so the speakers are parallel to the wall behind them, they're actually pretty sweet sounding, actually. Now, one advantage of this speaker because of its size and its very high sensitivity, I don't remember the number, though I believe, and I'll put it, in, I'll do a correction, if I'm wrong, I think the sensitivity rating is 99 dB. That's very sensitive. And that opens the door to playing the speaker with very low power amplifiers. Now, I use my Eclipse Cornwall 4s with a 2 watt amplifier, the Deckware Zen Trio. And the advantage of low power amplifiers is that they tend to sound, well, better in, the ter in terms of more natural. They have more sweetness to their sound. They're more harmonically developed. Whatever, however you want to put it, there's an advantage to going low in terms of power. Now, of course, if you want to play loud and you want to have parties and you want to feel it, the music, no, then a 2-watt amplifier or 20-watt amplifier is not going to be a good idea. But if you're someone who likes to just chill and listen to music at, let's say, normal listening levels, 2 watts with the Z Deckware Zen Triode may be just the ticket. And that's also made in the U.S. if you care. It's made in East Peoria, Illinois, and it's $1,000. Or maybe a, a 300B amp, that's the tube type, and those are typically 7, 8, 9 watts per channel. And uh, yeah, the L-Kit that I have at home right now, the L-Kit UT8600R, which I run on the Cornwall, it's a magical combination. It's a kit, 
but it's less than two thousand dollars although that price does not include the tubes I will link to the review right there my review but anyway yes using low power tubes with a speaker like this is definitely a worthwhile consideration if you're not into playing loud and speaking of not playing loud everybody looks at these speakers any big clip speaker and think whoa man those can really rock the house and yes they can with high power amplifiers but just as well I take great pleasure in playing them at very very quiet levels late at night I live in an apartment building as many of you have noticed and the ability to really enjoy music at very hushed late night levels is one advantage of very high sensitivity speakers and certainly Klipsch heritage speakers like the Cornwall and the Forte and the Heresy you can listen to them very quietly and really still enjoy the sound so again if you tend to be a quiet listener horns may be definitely the way to go there's, there's got to be some sort of relationship let's put it that way between room size and speaker size for any speaker really but since this is a review of the Clips Forte 4 let's say that the Forte 4 needs to be in not a small room sort of maybe let's say starting at like 12 or 14 by 20 something like that yeah that would be a nice size or a little bigger but if your room is smaller the Klipsch Heresy 4 would be a better match and if you have a pretty big room yeah a Cornwall 4 would be just the ticket so the rest of the system the rest of the system for today's test was pretty straightforward I used a Luxman CD player and a Prima Luna integrated amplifier and that's that was it with um, I believe uh, AudioQuest cables so yes the room is a tad live but you know Hi-Fi Loft just opened this location very, very recently, I think a couple of weeks ago. So they're still working on the rooms, so be patient. So I'm going to show you a quick what's happening in Hi-Fi Loft today, as it was in mid-May when I did this. And uh, if you're in the city and you're into high-end audio, you should check this place out. So as for music, I started with Son of Dave. Now this guy, well... Uh, he's a strange guy, man. He's doing blues. He's doing blues, but they don't sound like, it's not trying to sound like 1940s blues or the, no, this is very contemporary sounding blues. It feels, it's got a, it's got an edge to it that older, more traditional blues don't, doesn't really have. And Dave is just killing it, man. He's just hitting it hard. And uh, it's electric, it's acoustic, it's got a beat to it. It's, it, there's a lot going on. And I was cranking it over the Forte 4s and digging what the, the energy, feeling the energy. That's what horn speakers do so well. And this speaker uh, has the bottom end to support it too. That 12 inch woofer and 15 inch passive radiator, when you tune it to the room and you get it just right, because yeah, it does take some work, especially because of the passive radiator. You can't get too close to the wall, then it gets too boomy get it too far away from the wall behind the speaker it gets the bass gets too lightweight it's that sweet spot that you're looking for and that's what I was doing I was just in the speakers here to taste the, I asked permission of course to do that and yeah the speaker's low end is very fast very deep and very nimble there's no boom when you get it dialed in just right you just feel it and it sounds right so especially when I'm in an unfamiliar room setting like this one today, I have to bring some recordings I know inside out. And this one by Casey Abrams. This is a Chesky recording I recorded a few years ago in Brooklyn. And Casey is a power singer, man. This guy can, can scream, he can wail, but he's also can sing in a very beautiful, you know, quiet way. He's, he does it all. And he also plays, as he's singing, stand-up bass. And he had a tight little band with him. And that thing of his dynamics, of his singing, his control, his phrasing, that's what horn speakers like this do so, so well. Um, yeah, and I was, I mean, that was a key thing for me is how well does it capture that kind of delivery? Because, you know, most pop music is very heavily compressed. So that kind of, subtlety is just gone it's not I don't care what your system is if it's not in the recording if it's been crushed out of the, the music itself it ain't going to play back over your system but this recording with no dynamic range compression 
and a single uh, microphone, a single stereo microphone, it records the space. It was recorded in a church in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I heard the church, I heard the room, the acoustics, the bass, the band, there was some light percussion. And, and the Forte 4s were nailing those, uh, those gradations, those subtle dynamic shifts with just, was spot on. So then I was playing some reggae just to see how the speaker could uh, fill this room with deep pulsing bass lines. And the groove, not just the bass, but does, does reggae have that groove, that forward motion? Do you feel like you just got to dance? You don't want to see me dance. But you know, I did it by myself when the camera wasn't on. But yeah, does the speaker move you? Now the top end, um, the top end is clean and clear and of course uh, adjustable in the sense of how much towing you're giving the speaker, how much you're aiming it towards the listening position will make the speaker sound brighter and brighter, if that's what you want, that live sound, that high energy sound, or you aim them away a little bit and you can tone it down. You season to taste, put it that way. As for stereo imaging, well, the image like Klipsch's, which is to say they're not the most open sounding speakers, that they don't do, but they can be very precise in their, in their focus. But in terms of just disappearing, well, no, the speaker does not disappear. It's a big speaker. It sounds like a big speaker and it won't disappear the way a skinny speaker like the uh, Audiophysic Tempo 35 I reviewed uh, not that long ago. That speaker, that speaker disappeared. That speaker threw this huge, wide sound stage, just big. You could just get up off the chair and walk around in that sound stage. Uh, that's not going to happen with this clip speaker or the Cornwalls or the Heresy. You know, the sound stage tends to be flatter. But given the right kind of music, what was that? I was playing the Pink Floyd record the other day, a er really early one, my favorite period, pre-Dark Side of the Moon. And it was doing that huge wide spread. It wasn't that it was open, it was just the way the music was mixed and it just was it was going wall to wall. It was out of phase information. Anyway, yes, I'm, I'm digging my time here at the Audio Loft listening to the Klipsch Forte 4s. Yep, they've done it again. Klipsch has. And maybe when there's the Forte 5 and whatever, 20, 25 or 6 or 7, I will get that speaker at home and do it at home. But for today, this time out, I decided to just do it here. Well, to do two things. To check out the Forte 4 since I missed it when I should have reviewed it a few months ago, and also check out the Hi-Fi Loft. And uh, I'm really glad I came here. It's a beautiful spot. It'll be interesting to see how it all fills out and develops over time. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do here, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. To do that, it's pretty simple. You just hit that button right down there. When you do, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time there is a new episode. And then, well, you could check out my Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. And what else we got? We got playlists. Many, 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 many more speaker reviews and electronics reviews and headphone reviews and even music reviews plus interviews. And now that I'm doing face-to-face -face interviews again, oh man, it makes me very, very happy to actually be in a room with the person I'm interviewing. Anyway, my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.